former Democratic presidential nominee, spoke at a workspace for women event in New York City yesterday. She also gave her thoughts on the Me Too movement, losing the election, and the gun control debate. Joining us now is senior advisor to uh, Trump 2020 campaign, Katrina Pearson. Katrina, good to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. Thank your, you. Your thoughts on Hillary Clinton, who really <laughs> continues to look at this election and, and come up with, uh, I guess, excuses as to why she lost. Well, absolutely. You know, that speech actually went on uh, for the better part of an hour. And I thought it was, it was kind of enlightening. She seemed to be very comfortable among her supporters and being very candid and showing some emotion. So I applaud her uh, for that. But her remarks are nothing more than the same, Maria. She talked about us being at the bottom, and we're not even there yet, um, which is just really rinse, lather, and repeat. I mean, it's just, it's just over and over again. She's constantly demeaning Americans. This is the same way of her basket of deplorables, saying that half the country is backwards, because she and the Democrat Party, they don't want working-class Americans to have tax cuts. They don't want wage increases, or they don't want job creation, because they are now beholden to putting the needs of illegal immigrants and their families first. And that is the, the inherent issue that we're seeing here across the board in the political spectrum today in the United States. President Trump is putting America first and American people first. And to her, that's going towards the bottom. Yeah, he's putting America first. Is it too much in terms of putting America first? We've got a massive sell-off underway right now. Now, Katrina. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 500 points, and this is, goes right to President Trump's trade agenda. China has retaliated overnight uh, to the tune of 106 products, including some of the most important and most successful exports this country has, like airplanes, soybeans as well. Well, you know, when he says putting America first and undoing the deeds of previous administrations, um, not only was it not going to happen overnight, but it wasn't going to be easy either. Um, he is definitely doing some trade uh, negotiations as we speak. Um, I don't think anyone expected China to do, you know, essentially nothing in response to the president's trade agenda. Uh, but I also think things will settle down because at the end of the day, Donald Trump is not going to back off. He's simply yeah. just trying to level the playing field. China is doing so much more than just manipulating currency and dumping. They're doing a ton of things like stealing technology and then making Americans pay for it. We can no longer allow them to get away with it. It's going to be up and down for a little while, but the answer to do nothing is just not an option for this president. Katrina, how does lambasting, hammering, insulting Amazon on Twitter and in word, in spoken word, how is that America first? That's a great American company. Whether you agree with the politics of the guy who founded the company or not, how does that help? Is he going to mandate that we all shop at JCPenney just to keep that company propped up? Well, no, I agree with you. You know, the, the president absolutely speaks his mind. Um, whether or not it helps or hurts, I really don't think is the issue. I think it's Donald Trump being Donald Trump and telling Americans what he thinks and feels when he thinks and feels it. Uh, but I do understand the frustration with that. However, a lot of people really aren't paying attention unless the president is, isn't speaking out about it. The media is not going to cover a lot of what he talks about. And this is his way of expressing the way he feels about things. And he does care about the post office. Um, yeah. He does want there to be a level playing field. And he doesn't feel like they're playing by the same rules. Don Peebles, we got worries over a trade war this morning, unnerving markets. And then you've got Hillary Clinton out there uh, trashing Trump. Um, Going into the midterm elections, do you think Democrats want her to step out of the way? Yes, I do. I think, in fact, this Democrat does. Um, I think that she had her chance. She um, lost an election that she should have won, that everyone expected her to win. And that was because she's doing the same thing. She did the same thing she's doing now. She's attacking Trump, never articulating a vision of where she wanted to take America, never articulating a vision of how we can help working class Americans advance their lives. And here she is today uh, uh, bashing Donald Trump. Um, and, I, and, and, a, and, and that we've not bottomed out. Look, the economy is near full employment. Yeah. Um, the stock market was at record territory. Um, there is a feeling of almost economic euphoria, and she's talking about going down. Yeah. And, I, and there's another thing. I think one of the things Katrina mentioned about the Democrats fighting more for illegal immigrants than, um, their, than Americans. Actually, let's put it to the members of the House of Representatives. They, the Democratic members, many of them, are fighting harder um, for illegal immigrants and their rights than their own constituents 
who are young African American men who are being shot by police, who are uh, who are struggling in, uh, in in communities across this country, both um, urban and rural, and they're not fighting that hard for them. Yeah. Let's fight and solve our problems here. Yeah. Then we can start taking care of the rest of the world. And that's what Donald Trump is saying in a in not a way I would do it. Um, but we need to start putting our interests first. Yeah. And China is not the only country in the world either. And I think they need to understand that. And just real quickly, Charles Barkley said this on, to David Axelrod on his podcast, that the Democrats have, have, have let uh, rural uh, black communities down. And the, uh, one of the linchpins is, or, or keys, is the educational system. They have done nothing to improve education in rural parts of this country and in urban areas. Again, handouts to the teachers union, but they right. have not helped ki educate kids in this country for the last 50 years, this being the 50th anniversary of the death of Martin you're, Luther King. Jr. You're right. By the way, we don't have to look any further than New York City. This mayor got elected with 60% of the African American vote the first time around to win the primary. Yeah. And who does he sell a soul to? The teachers union here. And so he sticks these kids in these failing schools with a wait list of 150,000. They can't even get 000. to school because yeah. the subways don't work. Right. And 150,000 kids on a waiting list for charter schools, but he's against it. So and that's, you, that's you, the you issue. You hit on something real important that we got to get back to education and the state of uh, the communities in our country. Katrina Pearson, thank you. We will see you soon. Great Thanks for weighing in this morning.